welcome students now we'll be starting with our new topic that is kinematics of flow and ideal flow it is a branch which deals with the analysis of fluid motion without considering the forces causing the motion so in this analysis i will not consider the force which is causing the motion i will only be concentrating on my motion there can be two method of describing fluid motion i will just briefly touch this the two methods of describing fluid motion are method one is known as lagrangian method in this method a single fluid particle is taken into consideration and various parameters such as velocity acceleration density etc are described at various time intervals that means if a particle say a starts from a initial position x0 comma y0 comma z0 and it travels so after time t it reaches a position x1 comma y1 comma z1 so in this i am observing a single point and analyzing its path the velocity at various times the acceleration the density and other parameters so this method is known as lagrangian method the other method is euler's method or eulerian method in this method the velocity acceleration density and such parameters meters are described at a point that means if i have a point x comma y comma z then the parameters such as velocity is defined as velocity as a function of x comma y comma z density as a function of x comma y comma z and acceleration as a function of y x comma y comma z this approach is known as eulerian approach now let us discuss what are the various types of fluid flow so we start with first is steady and unsteady flows now let us take an example what is a steady flow and what is unsteady flow steady flow is defined as a type of flow in which the fluid characteristics like velocity etc do not change 
with respect to time at a given location so if i say if it is followed that fluid characteristics like velocity etc do not change with respect to time at a given location then it is steady state let's see how if p is the parameter then dou p by dou t at a position x comma y comma z is equal to 0 this is the condition for steady state let us take an example suppose a fluid is flowing through a nozzle i'm sorry flowing through a diffuser here it is a reducer where area is reduced the velocity at this point is v1 the velocity at this point is v2 now if m dot is constant that is mass flow rate is constant then this is my point x1 this is my point x2 velocity at x1 is equals to v1 velocity of x2 is equals to v2 so velocity at x1 and x2 do not change with respect to time such is steady state in case of unsteady state let us take an example if i have a tube here the velocity is v1 here the velocity is also v1 since it's a single cross sectional tube the velocity at point 1 and 2 will remain same so velocity at v1 this will be equal to velocity at v2 will be equal to v if m dot is not equal to constant then velocity v1 and v2 will change with time so this is unsteady state another way of describing fluid motion is uniform and non-uniform so in case of uniform flow The parameter p this parameter can be anything like velocity acceleration density anything dou p by dou x or rather i should write it as space dou p by dou s at a given time is equal to zero that means the parameter at a given time is constant or same rather or same at every location it is not constant is same the parameter at a given time is same at every location that means with changing position changing position also the parameter does not change example in a flow through constant area duct as you can see 
the velocity at this point is also v the velocity at this point is also v so even m dot is constant or m dot is not constant the velocity at point 1 and 2 that is v1 will always be equal to v2 therefore the flow is uh, the flow parameter is same at every location non uniform flow in this case when the parameter dou p by dou s at a given time interval is not equal to 0. That means, let us take an example. Again, consider a reducer. Area is reducing. The velocity at this point is v1. The velocity at this point is v2. So now the velocity is changing with respect to x. That means if this is x, the velocity is changing with respect to x. Hence, the flow is non-uniform. Another type of flow is laminar flow and turbulent flow. To see this, let us see an example. In a plane duct, in the laminar flow, if we inject a die, the die will follow a straight path. This is the path followed by the die. But when you see that you inject a die and there is a haphazard motion of the die this is my die which I have injected in a flowing stream this is a stream and die is injected so when die is injected and it is flowing in a stream and it flows in a systematic way such type of flow is known as laminar when it flows in haphazard way or zigzag way the flow is known as turbulent so this is a laminar flow this is turbulent flow if I talk in terms of velocity with respect to time in case of laminar flow the velocity remains constant whereas in case of turbulent flow the velocity at a location keeps on oscillating with respect to time. So this is turbulent flow. To identi identify the laminar or turbulent flow Reynolds number which is given by rho v l by mu where rho is density v is velocity l is characteristic length mu is dynamic viscosity so to identify the laminar turbulent flow, a number known as Reynolds number is identified. On the basis of Reynolds number, it is defined whether flow is laminar or turbulent. Reynolds number is ratio of inertia force to viscous force
when inertia force is much higher then viscous force fluid flow is turbulent another type of fluid flow is compressible and incompressible so as compressible suggest in case of compressible rho is not constant in incompressible rho is constant so usually compressible flow is taken for gases this is taken for liquids one more way is when mach number is less than 0.3 flow can be assumed as incompressible flow can be assumed as incompressible where mach number is nothing but velocity of fluid by sonic velocity a is given as under root of gamma rt this you will learn in thermodynamics so if mach number is less than 0.3 you can assume your flow to be incompressible one dimensional two or three dimensional flow a flow is classified as one two or three dimensional depending on the number of space coordinates required to specify the velocity field that is if velocity is a function of x comma t then it is 1d velocity is a function of x comma y comma t it is 2d and velocity is a function of x comma y comma z comma t is 3d let us understand with an example now as you see a flow in a pipe you might have understood that in a pipe the fluid flow like this with a velocity profile u is given as u max 1 minus r square by capital r square so velocity u in the x direction is dependent on the radius r this expression will be taught in the next lectures but as in the case if the fluid is flowing in a pipe this is the general expression where velocity varies with respect to r this is the capital r which is the radius and this is small r at any radial distance from the center so this kind of flow is one dimensional flow now let us take another example of two dimensional flow such that this is a two dimensional flow where the velocity at this point varies as well as the velocity along this varies so here the velocity is a function of radius as well as this z 
so this kind of flow in a tube with the cross sectional variation and the velocity is also varying along the radius r such kind of flow is two dimensional it is important to consider that velocity or the flow direction is along x axis only this is very very important point that people get confused that if a flow is two dimensional if a flow is two dimensional then it should flow in two dimensions no if flow is two dimension the velocity should depend on two space coordinates the flow can be only in one direction but the velocity should vary along z axis as well as r axis so such type of flow is known as 2d flow so you have understood the difference between 2d flow and 1d flow now let us see how this flow can be made 1d flow if in the changing cross section if i take an ideal condition then my fluid velocity if my fluid is ideal then my fluid velocity will not change with respect to r it will only change with respect to z so here in this case my velocity is only function of z hence this is 1d flow 3d flow in which your velocity is a function of x comma y comma z it depends on three space coordinates such flow is known as three dimensional flow